Trying to bring you down, but for real, you might as well give up now. Think you got a chance, but I don't see how. Got a real tight grip when I hold that crown. My life been good and bad and all around. The more things I lost, the more I found. One thing I taught myself to do, no matter the problem, refuse to lose. So, how you want it, man? You can choose. If you can't take the heat, don't light the fuse. See, I walk in slow and ignite the room. Like fire, everything I touch, I consume. I'm getting up while y'all just snooze. While you make breakfast, man, I'm on the move. I'm the first one in and the last one out. Whoever Owns the place, gotta drag me out I, In me I trust oh, Yeah, I smell like success This Elon Musk, huh? Everybody wanna be like us We don't stop Cause the top just ain't enough, huh? I ain't never gay, no I ain't scamming You know black men don't blush, huh? Came here ready to fight on this night You better just run for your life You come and see what it's yeah. like Living by the rules that you write You oh, are not those lavish delights oh, I've been Now you have no back in sight All the little lies you recite Just makes all the savage unite Usually I'm very polite But I'ma get savage tonight Even when a dog being nice Every single dog gonna bite You might think I'm wrong but I'm right Just let it get a strong appetite I'ma let it breathe just a little Give it to you strong heavy metal I don't make a sound when I strike You better just run for your life Run for your life Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Ward Radio live stream. I am your host, Carden Ellis, and today I'm joined in the studio by none other than Kwaku L and Jacob Hansen, as well as via the interwebs, via the Zoom, with another another smooth operator, none other than uh, we got Greg Madsen here and Brad Whitbeck to talk about uh, an interesting controversy that seems to have come up uh, recently, none other than the new comms director of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Now, we're, there's been a lot of chatter online about this, and uh, before we tell you what this is, we're definitely going to tell you what this isn't, okay? This isn't a digital mob, okay? This is uh, the court of public opinion, but we believe in all the ethics thereof, not taking people out of context, kind of, you know... Uh, doing our best to uh, steel man uh, people's positions and so on and so forth. There's going to be a lot of different uh, opinions that are expressed here on um, this guy, this choice, uh, the potential uh, effects that it'll have, so on and so forth. Okay, but at the end of the day, I'm 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 here to learn. You know, there's much people people that are much smarter than this in the room. Before we jump into it, Brad, can you be keeper of the chats this round? I got you. You got And we me. got one just now. Okay. Well, why don't we start out with the happy stuff, my man? Catch us up on Super Chats. As everybody is coming into the stream, make sure you like the stream on your way in. Make sure you share it with your friends on your way in, okay? And um, if you haven't subscribed to us yet, please, uh, please let this be the day that we earn your subscription. So, Brad, why don't you catch us up on the Super Chats before we get started, my man? All right. We're starting off with Arcade Heroes. I wanted to thank you for all that you do. Plus, the shout-out on the recent contest. 
I discovered the channel only a few weeks ago, but have been inspired and informed by both the content and Ward Radio community. All right. Yeah. Well, well, hey, that's thank, good. Thank you very much, Arcade Hero. Now, just be honest. Who's your favorite? Is it Kwaku? <laughs> Is it Cardin? Is it, you know, our Canadian friend, Brad Whipek? And you have to choose. And your choice <laughs> will reflect whether or not you are blocked permanently from this channel, Arcade Hero. No, I'm totally just kidding. So, anyway, thank you very much for the super chat, Arcade Hero. Uh, Brad, keep going. Um, that's all we got for right now. Oh, that's it? Mm hmm Oh, okay, that's surprise. No, we got a couple of memberships as well. Oh, no. Oh, do you want me to track those as you well? I'll, yeah, I'll watch actually, for those. Actually, here it is. This is a problem with the YouTube. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up really fast on my Opera browser here. Unfortunately, a lot, once you start, uh... The stream OBS doesn't pick up all of the conversation that happened before stream. Yeah, I got him here. Casey Nelson. We've received the records of one Casey Nelson. Jonah Barnes isn't here. The ward librarian, the ward clerk, the ward radio clerk is not here to do this. So I have to do Jonah Barnes job for him. Uh, we've received the records of Casey Nelson in the ward radio wigwam. Everybody would like to welcome Casey Nelson to the ward radio wormhole. To usher him in as a Ward Radio watchdog, please put a W in the chat. Welcome, Casey Nelson. Also, uh, Geography Guy hit us up with a super chat before the stream even started. I love this. This guy was the early bird gets the worm. He said, it seems like President Nelson is trying to recreate, quote, the Mormon moment, end quote. We had during Hinckley's time that ship sailed away with Prop 8. Oof. That guy, I can guarantee you, is Californian. I got to tell you, there there was a line in the sand drawn in 2008, and it, life was different pre-2008 and post-2008. So anyway, we are all caught up in um, Super Chats. Why don't we do this? Greg, you just did a video on this, my man. Why don't you catch us up as to what's going on and what some people's concerns are? Because you're definitely plugged into a lot of the more conservative membership of the church. And you seem to have your ear to the railroad tracks on this. Give us a bird's eye view of what's going on and tell us what some of the concerns are, my man. Well, there's a there's a new, a new person in the role of managing director of communications. So that's at the top of the level of, of, the, of the Department of Communications. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Sheridian. Okay, I got the picture uh, up right he's here. He's got an interesting background. He's got an interesting social media in the past. Okay. Uh, and he support has supported certain ideologies, certain uh, – he supports pride. He supports the trans movement. He supports pronouns. Um, just kind of an interesting selection is all, you know, for, for the position of someone who is in charge of the communications of the church. Okay, so why is that such an interesting selection? Just illuminate us. What's the, this is causing a lot of beef. People have been asking me about this for the past 48 hours. So I've dived in. I've got a ton of these screenshots that you're talking about that have been pulled from his social media posts, which mm -hmm. is the way that we, you know, communicate with the world. And some would call it virtue signaling. Others would call it just, you know, social media. Okay. But, um, yeah, there, there's a lot of things in there that kind of give me pause. Now, I don't want to just judge the guy because a bunch of people, um, you know, that hate all of those ideologies and, and um, causes, you know, maybe want to give a, a disproportionate view of him. I would like to take in all the information before accepting judgment. And as my buddy Jim Bennett said, you know, it amazed him how many people were Republicans first and Mormons second. I don't want to be somebody who is maybe... Uh, I don't even want to say like Republican first, but like a X on whatever issue first and member of the church second, you know? So we want to give this guy a fair shake. At the same time, dude, I've seen some screenshots that give me some serious pause, man. So um, why don't you illuminate us? You want to do it, Greg, or you want to do it, Jacob? Who wants to take this? Um, let Greg run with this one. Okay, first. Greg, catch us up, man. Give us just no holds barred, bro. <laughs> Well, look, here's the issue, right? It, it's an issue of is is we just had in general conference as exa and ex as an example in in this last October conference, you had three different talks from President Nelson, from President Oaks, and from Elder Christofferson, all talking about supporting the doctrine of the family and supporting a man and a woman as marriage. Right. And, okay. and and the family proclamation. Um, that is the exact opposite of what 
at least in the past, this guy has pushed and seems to subscribe to. Okay. So that's just a question. Look, that's not our decision to make. We don't decide who gets hired. Uh, They can hire whoever they want. That's up to them. This guy's got a lot of a very beefy uh, uh, resume in terms of global communications. He's been with the UN. He's been with Fortune 500 companies. Um, You know, and, and he's probably very good at what he does. But the question is, is, okay, if we've got this something being taught from the pulpit, that is, hey, we need to be defending the doctrine of the family. Are we putting people in positions in the church that can be integral positions in the church for, for the messaging of the church that don't believe in those things? They don't believe in the family proclamation. I'm not saying he doesn't believe in the family proclamation, but certainly some of the things that he has, that he displays are contrary to the teachings of the family, the doctrine of the family. Okay, so um, what we're going to do now is I've been sent a bunch of screenshots, ad nauseum screenshots here from our boy A.A. Ron Sherinian. By the way, I think we just need to start calling him A.A. Ron. You I was know, going to call him brother he him. Well, brother he him. <laughs> but do you spell it H-Y-M-N like Lego <laughs> Joseph Smith? Is that your thing? Well, why, why don't we just really fast? I'm going to burn through the top 10 screenshots that I was just sent of people saying, hey, man, is this the guy that literally just got chosen to be the comms director of the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints? So I'm just, uh, these are kind of somewhat randomly selected. This is what was sent to me. Okay, so we're just going to burn through these really fast. And as we say, um, you know, on the street, we're going to show you the evidence, let you uh, let you decide. So here's the first one. Here's Aaron Sherinian, and here's a post he made. It's, it's dated August 2016, so it's, it's a while ago. I don't know, maybe his views have changed or not, but he was... Um, Excited about uh, Chris Mosier making history as the first trans member of Team USA. Uh, here's another one where he's giving a slogan uh, that is very familiar for the trans rights people, saying transgender rights are human rights. Join us in standing up for trans rights everywhere. And, you know, hashtag LGBTQIA and so on and so forth. Um, there's another one. Way to go, SCOTUS. All right. He said, way to go, SCOTUS. Gay marriage now legal across all 50 so states. Can I can I make a quick comment on that one? Yes, you can. Because the word of the day on this for me as I look at any of this is confusion. Okay. okay? Uh, you want to confuse people? Here's, a, here's an idea. Release a proclamation to the world saying that marriage is defined by God as the union of a man and a woman. And then hire this guy putting that up on the screen of his of his uh uh this tweet hire that guy as your communication director for the world i'm okay. sorry like and, and like, what's the confusion elaborate um, as to what the what's confusion the is. confusion you literally how much did the church spend on prop eight Six, well, well, it was it was sixty four million dollars. Ex- half of it excellent, was excellent, excellent. And then you hire this guy who put the tweet back on the screen. Okay, we put this guy is now the guy who's running your comms department. If you can't okay. beat him, join him. Yeah, uh, is that is that okay. it? I mean, well, are, are do, that do you think that that's what's going on? <laughs> one, one quick question. One thing okay. that I wonder about. Yeah. Uh, as as you look at all of the uh, tweets, I'm curious because uh, especially the last one, the from 2015. That's eight years ago now, right? I, I wonder, that, like, that's what I'm saying. Are are his views? Are they the same? Like, was this part of the interview process or? Or did it not even come up, come up anymore, right? Like, I'm curious how that went down with the church office building. Like, you know is that this well, the church yeah, office building did what? hire Dan McClellan. So, yeah, but guys, this is the global communications director. Go this go is, to like, his LinkedIn page right now. Like, the prophet oh, yeah. hired this guy. Okay, like, let's be, like this is one of the most important roles functioning in the church. This is not. This didn't just get slipped past the desk and like a no name was able to sign off. The brethren know who this guy is. Did they go through his Twitter profile? I don't know. They, is that what they do? Look, it, well, he worked profile. already like, so he, for Deseret Management Corp. He was he was a vice president under Sherry Dew. He he, 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 he worked He's already been Davos working group? for the church. Well, well the Deseret they, they we all know yeah, that Deseret did. Deseret UN? Management Corp runs Deseret Book, and Deseret Book is just full of all sorts of woke nonsense. I know, but but saying they didn't know who he is, like you're part of the Davos Group, W E F. 
uh, UN, I'm not kidding, all three. Like, all three things Alex Jones yells about. Like, he's part of, like, this guy is, oh, is he in really? on the know. They, the, they hired him. Like, the church leadership hired the guy. And sometimes, if he can't beat him, Join him. Yeah, and well, I want to tell well you story. Joseph Smith Joseph Smith brought on John C. Bennett, so... Hey, can I tell you a story? Okay, this yeah. A story. Uh, Brett Kreischler, he's a very famous comedian. Do you guys remember this, the comedian who tells a story about, like, ex- hanging out with a Russian mob one night accidentally? Okay, yeah, okay. yeah, he's really funny. Okay, so his dad was an attorney, and his dad's, one of the first cases his dad ever got was battling the Church of Scientology in court. And no one thought he was going to win. Well... Rhett Kreischler's dad beat the Church of Scientology in court, and they had to pay like a few million dollars to someone. And L. Ron Hubbard said, huh, if he's good enough to beat us, he's good enough to work for us. Put him on retainer. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, okay. that, and, and that's the question is, if, if it is just about, you know, gravitas, acumen, connections, so on and so forth, I say, well, why not just hire Barack Obama? You know, it only took $100 million for Netflix to woo him over as a producer on three movies <laughs> that are super DEI. I mean, they're so DEI that they say you can't, they literally, you can't trust white people, you know? So why don't we just hire Barack Obama if it's all about money, connections, UN, Davos, so on and so forth, right? You know? The optics would probably be better. So um, anyway, okay, you say go look up his LinkedIn profile, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to go over all the old stuff, and then we're going to go over the new stuff, and we're going to let everybody see it so nothing is taken out of context. We're not, context. We're not engaged in presentism or any of that. We're going to be as fair as we possibly can here, and then the people that have questions and concerns can you know express why they got questions and concerns. Okay, so, we are, so, so yeah. just to be clear, you guys are saying his – what he has publicly, uh, you know, advocated slash given praise to disqualifies him in your eyes from being global communications director for the church. Absolutely. Because here's the thing. And his, this is where I'm going to drop like the, the hard point. You're in charge of communication for the church. Communication is about clearly conveying ideas and notions to other people. What does his Twitter profile and all of these images what does that communicate? And if someone's like, oh, well, it just communicates, you know, love and support and, and kindness towards those who, who experience same gender attraction. I'm sorry. No. That'd be like me waving a Confederate flag and being like, it's just about states' rights, guys. If you're offended by this, like, you, you, you know, this is just me communicating my, my pride and my Southern heritage. Here's the thing. If you're a communications director, you know what you're communicating. And what you're communicating when you're out there wearing a pride flag and posting love is love, I'm sorry. Love is love is not anything close to what our church has to do. So what he has demonstrated in his ability to communicate online through modern mediums is that he either doesn't know how to communicate effectively because he's obviously working with extremely controversial sort of symbols and things like that, or it's, we call a spade a spade, and the guy is a woke activist who has just been hired by the church. Well, see, my only problem with this, and I'm going to put this on the screen again so that we don't bury the lead and so the audience has a chance to see what has caused a lot of, they call them conservative members, but I don't even like using those binaries anymore because they never fit and their definitions don't work all the time. But like, here's, for example, a post that he made saying, um, you know, I love these kids. I'm so proud of their hashtag pride, how grateful we are for examples of allyship and for diverse communities who rally and outreach and so on and so forth. And a lot of people take issue with what the modern pride movement has become. This is not the Stonewall riot riots anymore. There's a lot of intimidation. There's a lot of people's lives who've been ruined by people that have been walking around with these symbols on their t-shirts and on their backpacks. I never went to a BLM uh, BLM rally when I was covering this kind of news in 2018, 2019, and 2020. During COVID, I never went to a BLM rally where I didn't see a building burning or an Antifa guy that didn't have a rainbow flag or patch sewn onto his jersey or his backpack or his paraphernalia. And you know, that kind of association is not lost on people at the same time i don't think every person that dons a rainbow pin um is embracing you know the 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 worst aspects of their movement but i can understand why the average layman would take issue and be given pause so let's go through the rest of these um older posts and then we'll do a a social media audit of the new ones here he is advocating basically for the me too movement he said the new power conversation continues and it's a posting of a New York Times article that talks about, um, you know, the success of Me Too during the, quote, age of distrust. Here's another three or four right here. 
He's um, talked about LGBTQ rights. Um, hashtag love is love. Here's another one. Um, high praise for Biden. The Geneva Global Initiative. The UN. <laughs> you know, the UNGA, which I can't even remember what the uh, acronym stands for. Greta Thunberg. He's down with climate change, you know. Seriously what? awesome. What? You guys, what does you know? this communicate? Okay? It's, it's so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is objectively funny and I'm tired of pretending it's not. Okay. They got like like every tinfoil hat member of the church is losing their mind cuz he checks every box. Like uh -huh. it is okay. Are you uh, here's the but, question. But 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 this is where okay. I got I got to jump in on something here because this is super important. Okay. okay. The problem is that this gets framed politically. All right. And in, in the minds of so many, it becomes this: the church. Uh, we start to draw things between conservatives versus liberal members versus progressive members. I don't care about any of those. I want to just throw all those out the window because at the end of the day, what matters is if it's consistent with Christ. Go read Moroni seven. And everything we evaluate should be evaluated through the lens of if it aligns with Jesus Christ. Gay marriage does not align with the doctrines of the church. There's nothing of hatred towards gay people. I love gay people. But when you are coming into the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and you are in any way advocating for a position that is inconsistent with our doctrine, that is a problem. Okay, and, and most people that are spreading these hashtags on social media, at least in the blogger knackle, have been engaged in activism against the church. And there is a problem that we've noticed in the paid bureaucracy, not necessarily the volunteer clergy and the priesthood of our church, but in the paid bureaucracy of our church going woke. And Greg Matson has done a lot of really good exposés on, you know, everything from Deseret Book to BYU making serious missteps that are doctrinally unsound by espousing the sec. The, the secular religion of academia that now has, you know, uh, been manifest in the term woke, right? So here's what gave me a pause. Now, before we start sounding like, hey, you know, we're a bunch of conservative people that take issue with this guy advocating for liberal policies, this one is the first one that actually really gave me pause. He's apparently huge on, uh, you know, the vax, okay, and the lockdowns, and here he's posting a very pro mask article saying how getting back to normal is never going to happen and we all have to accept it and so on and so forth. He posts another article where yeehaw, look, here's Bill Clinton, George Bush and Barack Obama. They all got the vaccine and so on and so forth. And we always talk about the damage that conservatism does to the LGBTQ movement. That's why we embrace love is love. And they always take that defensive position. But nobody ever talks about the damage that the liberals do to society. Nobody ever answers Jordan Peterson's question about what happens when the left goes too far. And I'll tell you what happens when the left goes too far. We all have concern about the suicide rate of LGBTQ youth in our society. It's the principal rallying cry and bully position taken by anti-Mormons, I'd say. But nobody ever talks about what the lockdowns did to our youth. We had children in my ward engage in self-termination attempts. That after months of counseling, you know, from from what I understand that I've been told by loving individuals, OK, was really just a plea for help to get out of the house after 18 months of lockdown. Let me tell you, cabin fever for a 14 year old is not just cabin fever. OK, we had grandparents that had to die. Alone. There was people in my ward that died alone, unable to hold the hand of their loved ones as they expired because of these stupid lockdown measures that people like A.A. A. Ron Sheridan seem to be saying are, or at least virtue signaling, if you want to call it, or else signaling, oh, hey, yeah, you know, that, that's the winning team. That's the good thing. So I, I get triggered personally. We're always told that, oh, you know, young people, part of X minority group or else X special interest is, interest group, they, they don't want to come to church because they don't feel safe. I don't feel as safe in a church with bureaucrats that want to shut my church down for 18 months like the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was shut down in California for 18 months. You guys in Nevada, you guys in Utah did not experience the shutdown that occurred uh at the hands of Gavin Newsom and the Democrats in California. And when I see guys like this who are virtue signaling hard, going hard in the paint for all of these woke causes, I got to tell you, it gives me pause. It gives me pause. Now, at the same time, I we just did a podcast yesterday 
where Rick Bennett, okay, and Scott Vance decided that they all wanted to get all on their suburban high horses and say that we didn't pass their purity test because we are crass or we are this or we are that. So I, I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to say, look, dude, no, no purity tests here. You know, I, there's part of me that sees how maybe you're trying to advocate for those, what you perceive as the downtrodden. And maybe you haven't seen what happens when the left goes too far in California. And maybe because, you know, you're, you're hanging out in Utah, you are unaware of uh, what happens on the extreme end of the scale of the politically uh, political ideology that you're virtue signaling here, right? But I don't think people like uh, Jacob or people like Greg are too off base if they say, hey, hold on a second, I got some questions. And that's why we labeled this live stream, I got some questions. So Greg, what are your questions, my man? Jacob Hansen, what are your questions um, that you have if you were to be able to sit down A.A. Ron, which, by the way, we need to start the trend of calling him A.A. <laughs> Ron, right? So we we labeled this live stream, um, I've got questions, because I can see why normal, rational people might have some questions and concerns over a lot of this symbology, over a lot of this virtue signaling, over a lot of these hashtags and these statements and these pledges of allegiance that have apparently been made in cyberspace. You know, so before we do a modern social media check, let's go over the older stuff. And Greg and Jacob, tell us, what are your questions, my man? Greg, what are your questions? Um, what are your concerns? Oh, Brad. We do have some super chats that I wonder if we want to get to okay, sooner let, or no, later. Let, let, let's get to them. Uh, well, actually, let's let them tell us what your questions and your concerns are, Jacob and Greg, and then we'll do the super chats. So you got a couple minutes, two minutes, Greg. What what are your concerns here, man? My my concerns. I don't know if I'd say direct questions, but my concern is this: we oftentimes when people push back on something like this, they're saying they're looking at this in a vacuum, like, oh, this is why do you have a problem with this hire? What is the big deal? He has different politics, and and like Jacob said, it's a very good point. Is this some conservative versus liberal thing? This has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with politics or which side of the aisle you, 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 you come with your perspectives. It has to do with a much larger problem that is well outside of the communications position. And that is an ideology and of, of wokeness that is completely contrary to Christianity, to the doctrine of Christ, to the restored gospel that he seems to participate in. It, it is not, you don't just look at this in a vacuum like, oh, look, this is who they hired. This is a massive problem across the country. So do this you think the church is going This is a massive problem woke? for the church. We, we have families that are being lost. We have kids that are that parents are losing to this ideo these ideologies. It is, it is they're, they're falling like flies, quite frankly. I mean, it's, it's, it's a major, major problem that we don't seem to, as a church, want to call out. And in fact, what we're doing here is the opposite. We are putting somebody who adheres to this ideology and putting them into the position of communication. So we can't look at it in a vacuum. He is part of a much larger movement that is against the restored gospel. Okay, so so I mean, them's be fighting words. You You think based off of what you've been able to see, if I understand you correctly, I want to steal man your position here. You think that based off of what he has posted online, his allegiances seem to be more towards what you call the religion of academia, what the layman might call wokeness, okay? What a sociologist might call the conceit of Marxist, uh, you know, uh, sociology and so on and so forth. You think he seemed to have virtue signal a higher respect for the authority of that wokeness, that liberation ideology, that um, religion of academia, than the doctrine of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I'm not saying he's putting it higher. I'm saying he definitely adheres to it, though. I mean, you cannot bring both of these things in together. But that's what the ideology wants to do. It always acts as a virus, right? It comes in, it has to find a healthy host. The Church is a very healthy host and so, and you know these these ideologies as viruses you can't go somewhere it's not going to work very well it doesn't it doesn't uh, uh 
flourish with an unhealthy host. Okay, well, then have a healthy host. That's why it's after the United States. That's why it's after the church. It has to have that healthy host. And so it targets a healthy host. And and then you try to bring them together. It never works. You cannot conflate a secular ideology, as Elder Maxwell would talk about, secularism versus eternalism. They don't conflate. You can't bring them together. Okay, so here's my question. Um, you know, I, I agree with you. Uh, scripturally, God cannot serve God. I mean, sorry, man cannot serve God and mammon, as the scripture says. And if these screenshots, and we haven't done the modern social media check yet, so our analysis is incomplete yet, but if these screenshots are 100% authentic and are demonstrative of his views, yeah, I'd see he, he, he qualifies as, quote, woke. And I don't think woke is compatible with the doctrine of Christ. Are you saying he's bad so, at communicating? Oh, no. Well, he's good at communicating if you want to work at the UN. You know what I'm saying? He's definitely good at communicating if you want to work at the UN or Davos or for a very large see, that's, 500 that's sort of, company. That's sort of the issue. Okay. He's well, bad so, at communication. So, so here's my question. Was this an? It's either an accident, or it's intentional. I doubt. I mean, I wouldn't like to think that the church was so incompetent that they'd literally give the reins to their entire communications department to somebody they had no idea was an ostensible Guys. trans activist. What? What? What do you think? <laughs> oh, so you think so, huh? Craig? It what? what? said what? in the headline, Latter-day Saint leaders hire new communications director. Come on! What? This okay. Is, look, first. So is the church going woke? I mean, that's the question a lot of people are asking. The, the, the question, you, the, the relevant question is, um, do church leaders support his efforts at these Okay, world organizations. Let's, let's, and, 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 and. Yeah, let and Quaku finish. Is gay marriage on the table so, for the future? So, okay, now hold, hold on a second. If, if this is where the church wants to go. It is a genuine question. I, I proposed a question on Twitter. People got mad at me for asking, but it's very relevant to what's happening today. If this is the future, and this is the direction the church has said, hey, in 20 years, we're going to be a we're going to be a church that allows gay marriage. This is the person you'd hire. And, and second, the church was was pro vaccine. The church, some of the apostles, Bednar spoke out against it, but a lot of the apostles were pro lockdowns. Razban was very much pro vaccine and pro lockdown. Um, uh, Sharon Eubank has been a, a part of something with the UN women's rights. A lot of a lot of part of a, a big part of the church office building, including leaders we sustain in general conference, are not too far off from some of the things and some of the places Aaron supports and goes. So the question we're saying, is the church going woke? Is the church already, what, what does woke even mean? Woke, you know? I mean, these are relevant questions. Well, and, let's, uh, let's yeah. well, well, hey, well, let, me, let me push back Well, on well hold on a second, hold on a second. I just want to make sure I clarify Kwaku here because he hasn't had a chance to talk a lot yet. And he did do a poll today that I'm going to put on the screen. Kwaku, so does this seem to you like the church is laying the foundation for a change on its position on gay marriage? Well, no matter what, sub, uh, a bold position has to be taken, and here's what I mean by that. Because one, you've got um, uh, you've got the church and church leaders who say, "Look, doctrine does not change. The church is a man woman church, and that's it." But at the same time, you know, we've got um, you know, uh, uh, who is a superstar in the church right now? It, it's Charlie Bird and his husband who go to church make church content, speak at these conferences, and they're, they're, they're gay and they're married to each other, right? Um, you know, Deseret Book carries books that are very supportive of the Richard LGBT Osler. cause. But at the same time, church says, this is doctrine. It's this, is this. So right now, our church culture is kind of like we have one foot in the door, one foot out of the door, um, dividing these two rooms. And so something has to be done. The church has to come out and say, look, we will never, ever, ever support this. The family proclamation will not change. Oh, Gender like will be changed. You, like they said in general conference, this last conference, and literally well, all I, the I, time. I, I, well, I, I, well, let him finish. finish. Let him finish. <laughs> and we would like respective church outlets to affirm this position and what they put out there in the public, including Brigham Young University, Deseret Book, all that stuff. 
it ha- it's going to have to take a firm, like an, an all-reaching everyone in the tent, this is what we're doing, if you don't like it, get out. Or they're going to have to say, we're sorry, and we've s- sought new revelation, and the Lord has provided us a path we didn't see before, and now gay marriage is a part of the church. So but, if I if I understand you we correctly, haven't made a choice. As, as a professional yeah. event coordinator that's done a really good job making huge parties happen and so on and so forth with thousands of people, you understand that there's a runway of advertising that has to get done for the big event, and you're saying you kind of, you sense the 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 road getting paved for a major announcement if they were going to make a major announcement on a change on a view that's a little bit more secular on gay marriage that this is the move to take is hire the davos guy hire the un guy hire a dude that's loaded up with love is love and pro gay marriage memes and what gay just, trans rights what just happened two weeks ago what did the catholic church do uh, yeah, they, they clarified a position on allowing spontaneous blessings of people that were involved in same-sex uh, relationships. How many Catholics up until three weeks ago were, would say, if you asked them, you think the, the church would ever allow they go, what are you talking about? No, no, of course not. It's the stupidest thing ever. What a dumb question. Headlines. Uh, I'm, I'm not coping here, guys. I'm just saying I see what's there. I see who got the job. This is the reality we got to deal with. Why did he get the job? There is a lot of people okay. who could have been global communications directors I, who don't have those I politics. Have. Why did he get the job when he's outspoken and connected with certain people? Why did I, I, he? It seems like a choice has to be made in the future. And I'm just saying, it walks like a duck, talks like a duck. It's probably a duck. Jacob, you don't way, believe in trans there's ducks. A way the same it's as probably a duck. A duck. <laughs> <laughs> you don't believe in trans birds, it Jacob. So what no. is this thing? I, I got duck. a question. Okay, Brad, question. Brad, hit it. Okay. Uh, I'm just curious. On a scale of like 1 to 10, how likely do you guys think it is that we're blowing this all way out of proportion? I'm 60-40 on that. And. I think I would, I'm about an eight, yeah. maybe a nine or ten. I okay. would, I would. Here, here's what I would say. I would say that number one, when you look at what the brethren have actually said in the official priesthood channels of the church, the message is actually consistent. What's wild is this, and this is the part where I get confused, and that's the word that I want everyone to remember from this podcast is confusion. That's what this kind of stuff creates, because when you have on one hand the church literally in general conference, you know, if if we were going to roll out this new thing, you wouldn't have the prophet in general conference reemphasizing along with his counselors the doctrines of the family. Okay, so from the official channels of the church, I see a pretty consistent and clear message. On the other hand, from the unofficial sort of back end culture and things like that, that's where we see things that are a little bit strange. Hey, what's okay. up, my bigot? Um, so up, my bigot? Uh, hold on. Before <laughs> actually, Quaku respond, yeah. then Brad, get these super chats ready, bro. We're going to have to catch you up got fast. It. We yeah. got a lot to catch up on, and there's some ones that I think we're going to need to do some response to. Okay, okay and cool. Again, do you guys don't kill the messenger here. I'm just saying what yeah. it looks like, okay? No, yeah. Uh, I would, real, real quick. No question. The, this I, is, I get where you're coming from, Quaku. Quaku is exactly right in the, this is the way members are perceiving this. Everyone is smelling this going, oh, the writing's on the wall. And a lot of people are like, well, if it's heading this direction, I'm just getting out now because the church is going off the rails. But what I'm saying is, is that that's the problem. We're actually hurting people when we hire people like this guy because I don't think the church is going to change its doctrines. I don't think it's going to change on this at all. I know Greg's with me on that. And what's going to happen is, is all you're going to do is you're going to hurt people because people like Quaku are going to get the wrong impression and think, oh, well, the church is going this direction. This and is we know Quaku's kind of, kind of, kind of shifty in the first place. <laughs> well, let me, let me clarify. That brother's on the real edge quick. already, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, the, 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 it doesn't mean the church is not going to head that direction. We're, we're not at a stagnant place. It will probably keep moving in that direction, but that doesn't mean that the, that the, that the, the dam is going to break. Right, I don't believe the dam's going to break. I what do, do you not mean believe by that will moving happen. in that direction? You think about the ultimately, the ultimate decision that comes with the first presidency and the prophet on something like this. Can you imagine being in a room by yourself on your knees with God as the prophet of the church saying, "Should I do this?" The 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 the, in, the enormity 
of the mantle at that point to actually be able to make the decision to say, yeah, we're going to go with gay marriage. I, I cannot see that ever happening. I just, I just can't see it ever happening. But that doesn't mean that that, you know, as again, the woke ideology is not going to continue to enter into the church and that there's going to get, and things are going to get worse and more confusing. I think they are. But Greg, I, but, I have studied this ideology for too long. There is no way, unless you are cutting it off with everything you got, okay, Quake, that who, it is not going to march forward. Oh, it will. So, okay, so ho- hold on. Quaku, we got to do the Super Chats. Okay, then yeah, I'm yeah. going to talk about your poll and let you respond. Brad, catch us up on Super Chats real fast, my man. Hit me. All right, homies. Brace yourselves. we oh, got boy. a lot to go through. <laughs> okay, uh, here we Brandy go. Brandy Harkins, we'll start here. Quaku, when you say gay marriage, are you talking gay ceilings or just recognizing gay marriages? Um, I think likely it's recognizing gay marriages, allowing... Uh, um, married gay people at least in america and canada and parts of europe to uh have their marriages blessed to be married by the bishops and participate in callings and so their sexual unions would be morally legitimate at that point as yeah, long as they yeah. were married. i'm not necessarily thinking a temple ceiling um but i i i, I do think that that conversation has come up in the church office building. I'm just a excited for the times. other sexual ethics we can throw out the window. What does that mean to recognize it? Are you saying they're taking the sacrament, they're giving callings, they're fine in the church? Yeah, I'm saying everything up, everything excluding a, a, a temple ceiling. I'm so sure. So the law of chastity that, then, would that apply for a heterosexual man that is sleeping around and also breaking the law of chastity? I think they'd probably say um, uh, no law of chastity breaking before you're married, regardless of who you pick. The church would re. So what you're saying, Quaku, is that the church, after saying that marriage is defined between a man and a woman for basically ever and all throughout the scriptures, that it would then say, actually wrong. Marriage doesn't mean the union of a man and a woman for the purpose of creating a family. Marriage means the union of any two individuals. Okay. Example of that. Um, and by the way. Hear me out when I say the end of the sentence, because I don't yeah, want you guys okay. to go. Yeah, we're not dogpiling. Dog okay. There's no okay. dogpiling here. That's, remember, that's I'm not Mormon even taking subject. a position on this. I'm going. I've gone to full journalist mode for you're, this. You're I just, to make you're sure just, you're just calling it how you see it, and you're reading the tea leaves. Okay. All right, so, so keep going. Yes. So, um, uh, Brigham Young, Brigham Young famously said, after um, all of uh, Adam's descendants got the priesthood, and then after the second coming. Then blacks would get the priesthood. Okay, now that was something Joseph Fielding Smith reiterated a couple of times. Um, a number of apostles reiterated that. Kimball becomes prophet. We were we were wrong. It changed. New direction, new course. The second coming hasn't happened yet, unless I missed it. The second coming hasn't happened. So the millennium hasn't happened. So the question is, if that is part of our history, one of the biggest decisions that the church has ever made, that caused a big riff. Is this possible? Is it on the table? I'm not saying yes or no. But, but you if you hire is? Aaron Sherinian, like, if I'm looking at the history and I'm going, something like this kind of happened before, it could have happened again, this is the guy you're hiring, you guys like the UN, you like WEF, you told us to do all this stuff, you told us to get the jibby jab, you guys said do these things, you got the guy that's happy we did these things, and this guy likes these things that these people like, and the people that print our books like those things, and the people that run our school like those things, maybe they like those things. Okay, so Quaker, and I'm going to say you put your money where your mouth is, and you put in the time, and you did a little bit of an internet poll. Yeah, so yeah. I'm putting up on the screen the internet poll that you did, and here's a question you asked very frankly and simply. If the church embraced same-sex marriages and same, I have to start toning down. We've said this a lot in the algorithm here, so also Brad, do your best to euphemize some of these super chats. We try and read <laughs> yeah. all these super chats I, that I'm we can. I'm trying to figure out how to exactly put a weird algorithm. That. Yeah, yeah, so like try <laughs> yeah. and not get us put on some COPPA watch list or something, okay? But anyway, uh, Kwaku, you did uh, a, a very simple internet poll here and said if the church embraced uh same uh, gender marriages and same gender temple ceilings and the prophet directed it to be embraced and implemented by his authority and in the name of jesus christ would you stay a f- faithful member and by the way the end of this poll is 1454 votes which is quite a lot so let's just say i were to say yes that's only six hours it, has, it goes for one more day yeah there's 14 hours left okay but let's just say i were to click yes i'd stay 
Bro, you're sitting at a 52 to 47 split. We are exactly 50-50, at least your audience is, which we know is all of the uh, bereft young and dumb teenagers who haven't had correctly formed political <laughs> no, no. opinions this and is... all the 7 out of 10 chicks on the Wasatch Front. Okay, this but is... no, I'm just kidding. I'm just no, kidding. This, is, anyway. this is a new Twitter account anyway. Um, okay. Only, only 500-something followers. Okay. So I just put this out. I mean, this is not necessarily my audience. This is just kind of a hodgepodge audience. Been retweeted by a number of people. Of uh, uh, you know, so I think it's kind of a fair assessment. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, fifty-two forty-six, and I had a lot of people asking, "Why would you even ask this? This is such a stupid question." Well, it's in light of today's news, right? Yes. It's in light of what's this conversation about Aaron Sherinian, and asking if this thing is on the table. I wanted to just kind of gauge where people are at, and uh, I thought, I thought, I thought no would actually eclipse the yes. Okay. That's what I thought. Well, yeah. Where um, I was about going to say, uh, what what about yeah, Greg, uh, Jacob? Where I, I assume would you guys be in the yes camps if if the prophet came out and said I prayed about this, just like we lifted other bands, like uh, the apostle Peter lifted the ban of not talking with the Greeks and with the Gentiles, and just like we reversed. It's not the same. That's not the same. It's not uh, at yeah. all. And just so you know, uh, I'll give a very clear answer that. If I would be more inclined to believe that the brethren were making an enormous error and that they had done something terrible before I were to believe that God just so happened in 20 in the 2020s due to social pressure decided to change his definition of marriage well this is a, judging by the tweets that we've seen the old tweets we've seen from Sherinian, he's engaged in that social pressure he's put his little weight on the scale with his little hashtag and his posting for all of these hashtags that have been at least in my experience uh, against me, my friends, and my family in the church at large um, with some really powerful weaponry and have been pretty cruel, uh, frankly, in my opinion. Um, I think there was a lot of work to be done. And I have respect for that first generation, especially those guys that were engaged in the Stonewall riots and so on and so forth. I think there was a lot of bravery in that generation. But there's a big difference between 1960s liberalism and 1990s and early 2000s liberalism, just like there's a big difference between, you know what I'm there's saying, also, the there's 1970s. A, there's also a difference between... Um, okay, people in their own lives can do what they want in our society. We have a pluralistic society. And then people coming to the church and saying your church is bad and bigoted because it essentially maintains the no, exact No, no, but we're embracing this now, remember? Forever. Alan Bentley, we're embracing this now. It's like, what's up, my bigots? And we just, we don't, you <laughs> yeah, know, I we don't wish, pronounce the I T. I wish people in our church had know? that attitude, but they don't because Latter-day Saints, more than anything else, want to be nice. And so what happens is, is that the woke types use that niceness against us and say, you're not being very nice unless you embrace X, Y, Z ideas. Yes, and they seem to be more in love with niceness culture than they are with the doctrine of Christ. So, Brad, catch us up on all these super chats. Go, brother. Yeah, okay, I'm going to rapid fire a couple of these. Latter-day Skeptic says, ATC, bring it up to your bishop, not your stewardship. Okay, that means activism against the church, right? Ah, okay, yeah, cool. sounds like it. Awesome, keep going. Uh, Diamond Dave, loving the video as always. Hope you all are well. Thank you, Diamond Dave. Okay. Um, now, this one is fascinating. Rebecca Rich, I'm sure he's a nice guy and he can believe whatever he wants, but I don't understand why they would hire someone like this when we know there's a huge effort to infiltrate the church from within. Yes. Um, so what what do you guys think of that? No, there's a huge effort to infiltrate the church from within. Oh, it's the new wave of anti-Mormonism, okay? Because they figured out that um, trying to attack them from without didn't work. And also, we've civilized the West, and the U.S. government has you know basically come in and said, okay, no more just massacring Mormons. So what I've noticed is there is a lot of, there's a much more pernicious lie that spreads in anti-Mormonism now. How many of these anti-Mormons say, oh, I'm Mormon, and they virtue signal as Mormon? Mormon, even though they've already been excommunicated years ago, they self-represent as Mormons so that what when CNN calls or the Washington Post calls or, um, you know, uh, a YouTube channel calls and wants to get commentary on, I don't know, an apostle that died or are you a, a saying statement. they can't identify as a Latter-day yeah. Saint? Well, what happens is is I've seen a lot of people say like, oh, yes, I'm Mormon, and they treat their Mormonism not as a faith, 
that you are either adherent to or excommunicated from, but as some kind of funky version of Judaism, like we're some ethno religion. We're like, if you're born in Utah County, you just count as Mormon. And so you could walk into a conversation saying, yes, I'm Mormon, and then rehearse a bunch of anti-doctrinal uh, tropes and lies and anti-Mormon talking points, and people lap it up because they think they're getting it from, uh, you know, they're getting it fresh from the source, when in reality, they're getting it from the anti-source. And so, yeah, I think there is like Nemo the Mormon literally calls himself Nemo the Mormon. All right. Even though his channel is totally anti-Mormon, I would have more respect for him if he just said, OK, I'm Neiman, Nemo the anti-Mormon, you know, and then you've got the things that I've seen people uh, frustrated with Dan McClellan for saying on the Mormon Stories podcast, which I still think is a misnomer. I would have more respect if they just said, you know critics of the Mormon church podcast or the ex Mormon stories podcast. Cause ostensibly it's 99% interviews with people who have left the church, been excommunicated from the church or actively fighting the church church through some kind of podcast blog or activism. That is the new wave of people kind of being, it, it's what we say about progmos and anti -mo, uh, anti Mormons in my top 30 rules of anti-Mormons, like the third one is the reason why they call themselves progmos or progressive Mormons is because the progressive comes first. The politics always comes first. Instead of being, being missionaries of God's love into a secular society, a leftist society, okay, they are missionaries of secularism and political leftism into Zion, into God's society, into God's church. And that's why they're called progmos and not mo progs because they identify as progressives first political progressives first and then mormons second which is inherently the violation of what my boy jim bennett talked about saying it amazed him how many people identified as republicans first and then mormons second and then they let the republicanism drive their mormonism instead of their understanding of the gospel of jesus christ driving their application thereof brad Okay, back to the super chats. We've got PC, the church is open to change, as we can see from our history. Time will tell what additional changes we will see. Okay. Um, now, next up, we've got um, be fit to be fit. Be fit to be fit. Yeah, you might um, have to euphemize this one hard. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, there's there's a lot. There's there's four. Give from... us the gist, bro, because I don't know if half those words could be said on the algorithm, dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I think... Yeah, I'm I'm curious what to do with these. Um, so we've got just give us the just give us the basis of the concern and be fit to be fit. We're grateful for your uh, super chats. Uh, we don't want to get a community strike violation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we might have to tone them down a little. Let bit, me but... try to summarize. Yeah. I, I think the idea that he's going for. So like he's saying, just let them seal their marriage <laughs> with an act of sin. It's love. Polygamy, one thousand times more wholesome. Sin isn't love if it's hedonism right and so he is very much defining this as sin like jacob hansen has talked about before that this is inherently sinful right or so now, we just that, need to that i defined it i didn't realize that i defined this stuff well no okay. you're just saying i want to steal <laughs> just, man your you know what the scripture Brad, is i've never seen you filter a talk. comment this this much I'm reading oh. this thing, dude. This is heavy <laughs> filtering. We cannot <laughs> say quicker, this quicker, on the quicker. internet. There's, there's, there's four. So I'm filtering the first two. Okay. And oh. then there's two more after this. Well, and so. I would believe. Hold on, guys. Let me just clarify. I want to say that Jacob here has simply making a very valid question that if we're going to go forward with the things that we have seen A. A. Ron Sherinian here advocate for, it would logically require a removal of one of the major sexual ethics that has been taught by the church of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ himself for thousands it's... of years. And would, if we pave the way for that, then all of a sudden there's no reason to say polygamy is wrong. Try bigamy is wrong. Bigamy is wrong. Queer Polyandry is wrong. Queer polygamy. Hold on. I just want to, this is super important. Okay. This is not a matter of a simple change in policy or something like that, okay? The Latter-day Saint restoration was the restoration of priesthood keys for the purpose of sealing families together for eternity. That is the pinnacle of Latter-day Saint doctrine. That's what a bigot would say. Okay? <laughs> and in addition to that, in addition to that doctrine, which would be totally messed up by this, when you redefine marriage, okay? Quake, I'm going to ask you a question, Okay. If, He's personified is, his frustration in Quaku. No, no, no. I, it's I've dealt going with down. Here, you have to do this. Okay, then what is a marriage? 
Is it just a union between any two people? Is that what it is? Are you asking me? Yeah. Um, uh, a marriage is... I don't know. I'm, that's the only non-married guy here. I would say well, it, it's two people who've come to decide to come together to rear children to make society better. I mean, okay, yeah, all right. that bare bones. So, so right? do, they have to, do they have to rear children to be married? No. I mean, you, are, you married, are you married if you don't have children? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. You could say married. Now, no remember, okay, he's what, not the what bad is the purpose? guy, Jacob. I know, I know. <laughs> I know, but what I'm asking is, is what is the purpose then of this marriage? Like, why would I get married? Like, what, what's the big deal? Who cares? So, well, well, I mean, I see what you're saying. Um, I mean, so we've got a pretty high divorce rate in the church, right? At least among, like, people who are newly married, right? We kind of say the same thing. It's like, okay, why do you have some people getting married and getting divorced within two years? No, like, no. What is that? Is that I, even I'm marriage? asking, what, what, like, why does marriage even matter? Is it just two people coming together? Could it be a guy and a girl or multiple people? Like, why are we putting restrictions on love? Like, why are there any restrictions on this? Why does God care if I marry a man or if I marry a woman or if I marry two men and a woman? I we... think you've made your point, Jacob, that basically... I don't know what your actual no, question is. No, no, no. <laughs> my, point, my point is all of this. There is a reason that God has defined marriage between a man well, and a eternal woman. Eternal progression. To be like God. You're right. The, uh, you need it's the, because the, the, you, the, you need the, the yeah, union yeah. of the male and the female, the masculine and the feminine. They're like a yin and a yang. They form a complete whole, but without each other, they're separate. Th this is not something that is small in our doctrine. This is like central to Latter-day Saint theology. And so when you say, if the church were to come out and say, oh, anyone, you know, marriage is now defined as any two people who love each other. I would just be like, I don't even know what this church is anymore. Yeah, also, and that's under the corruption of the modern colloquialism love that does not have the same specificity that agape and all of the old definitions had where there was also this unconditional concern for their well-being we've converted love to basically just mean the erotic version that is almost totally lust so uh, the, well, the modern bass guys, let me finish we're getting into the weeds yes and we have a stack of super chats okay, let's catch us so up i'm on gonna super cut chats. this off and <laughs> okay. we're gonna keep going through these okay go for it Brad. please try to respond to these in less than like a minute Okay. okay. 30 seconds. I, I know you can do this. 30 seconds or less. <laughs> Back to be fit to be fit. Um, he really wants to know. He doubled it down on this one. How do same gendered married men, married men consummate a marriage? Oh. Answer. Who yeah. wants to explain it to our youths? That's... No, through through physical intimacy and obviously biologically, it's not the same as with a woman. I'm not going to go into graphic detail, but yes, you're, you're making a point that it does not naturally yield children because it's a biological male with a male or a biological female with a female, and that's incompatible with uh, childbirth. Yes, I get that. So next, next super chat. Okay, and then we've got. Yeah, I, I had such a stupid juvenile joke waiting. And I'm not, I'm not I know Quick was there. waiting for that one. Um, okay, here we are. You're doing a great uh, job. Jesus man. taught that adultery happened when you thought the sex act. So even being sexually attracted to a man, um, uh, from man to man, is a sin, um, and should never uh, get a temple recommendation. Nah, to me, I, that's, I think that nah. maybe takes a little far. No, yeah. like you can't control what you're. What you're I, I, Dude, I think if that we exactly told... church teaching is it seems to be that that's not the way Jesus meant that. I wouldn't have a temple recommend that's for sure. Yeah, I was about <laughs> gonna I was about gonna say like if we were towing the line that that's one of those things where it's like that's like revoking insurance for parking tickets. Nobody's gonna do that. Okay. Yes, we know that the perfect and the closer you get to uh, get to God, you know, you fulfill the scripture that to be um uh, uh, sorry to be uh, celestially minded is life eternal. To be carnal to be spiritually minded is life eternal. To be carnally minded is um you know spiritual death. Yes, if you're lusting after a woman, that is a momentary spiritual death, so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, there's such a thing as a difference between parking tickets and moving violations. I'm not going to revoke somebody's temple recommend or say they're not worthy to pray or do something, so on and so forth, just because they lusted after somebody for a while, especially if that person was hot and had the same quali quali characteristics that I would consider attractive, at which point I would say they just have good taste. And and I would say that like <laughs> dwelling on lusts like that is is different than just having attraction, right? I, I think there's yes. there's there's a degree of difference. Okay, there. keep going, Brad. Okay. Um, now again, uh, from Beef It to Beef It, this is his last one that he sent in. Okay. Um, and it's that 
Um, be fit to be fit. By the way, I, I just got to say this one, Carden. I, I I don't know how to euphemize this one. So for the for the algorithm, here we go. Uh, gay sex does not exist um, same way that gay marriage doesn't. Sex includes a man and a woman. What gays are doing is called sodomy. Please let's never forget what um what a different word is. We have a different word for this for a reason. Okay, um, that, and that's then child schmoing is just another preference. Okay, so um, we're going to skip that uh, part right there, move on to the next one, but I get that he's saying there's a reason why these words are different. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah, I think... I agree. The, the, there's a reason the core why point all is words that, are different. Sure. Yeah. Now, moving on to Rex Good. I will have a hard time not feeling betrayed if the church suddenly changed their teachings about same-sex relations. I obeyed, and I'm glad I did, but how am I to understand such a change as it relates to me? And Rex Good, if... Um, Jacob or Greg, you if you don't know, he's a faithful gay Latter Day Saint guy. Yeah, exactly. God bless you, my friend. Good for him. Yeah, Leave, living the law of chastity. And he's a great. He's a great. And he's a great uh, dude. And this the is show. the problem with with leading people on and and uh, pretending like there's going to be a change because you you undermine people's faith. You, you say and you're uh, you're you're basically saying, I'm going to move my hope in Christ putting my sins up on the altar and myself as a sacrifice with Christ. And I'm going to put my hope over here for change. Amen. Right. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's moving from a hope in Christ to a hope in change. And, and that's, that's mm. tragic. It's tragic. Yeah. And also um, I will actually uh, address be fit to be fit. Cause I, I do want to make sure that though there's a lot of frustration and anger that can be expressed during these things, especially in super chats and so on and so forth. Okay. I get it. Um, at the same time, I, I don't think it's fair to automatically assume, as some people might misinterpret that super chat, that just because you may be involved in an argument over uh, same-sex attraction amongst consensual adults, uh, that doesn't automatically qualify you as um, somebody who's attracted to people that maybe... Uh, not have enough years under their belt to be consensual, okay? Unfortunately, there's a lot of legislation that has been introduced in California and some of the other uh, blue states, at least in North America, that would call into question the distance between that association amongst the watchdog groups so I can understand the frustration, okay? But like I said, at the beginning of this podcast, we're trying to approach this with a scalpel and we're trying to steel man everybody's position here and give everybody a fair shake in... um saying what they do or don't advocate for. And there's nothing that shows so far that A.A. Ron has advocated for what some would consider the most egregious um, suggestions of the modern LGBTQIAA++ with now that red umbrella uh, movement. Okay. So, um, yeah, we're just going to clarify that. So we're as respectful as we can and steel man everybody's position. Brad, go. And be fit to be fit is just making sure to remind you that it is sodomy. That you're uh, okay, to. okay, um, Dude, so enough, that's... enough. Look, he's not entitled to ruin the words in my algorithm. Okay, <laughs> so be fit to be fit. I get it, but we're not going to be saying that anymore in this in this uh, live stream because I'm not going to have this dumped. You know what I'm saying? Because somebody wants to make a point here. We get your point, dog. Yes, we understand that it was a different word. We're euphemizing stuff here because we're trying to have a respectful conversation. Keep going, Brad. Okay, so next up, we've got um, Darren Labram. Great discussion. Hear me out, homies. If only the communications director upped his game and flew on Epstein's Lolita Express plane oh, seven times stop. like Doofus Donnie, bitch. we could promote him to president of the United States, not just comms director. Epstein Donnie approved this message. Oh, geez. So oh Trump derangement hey, you, Darren. right there, but it was funny. So <laughs> yeah. keep going. Yeah, that, that was kind of funny. Yeah. Um, now, this is an interesting one. We've got from Luke Hansen. Let's not forget that the future of the church resides outside the USA. Africa is generally not on board with this woke ideology. Okay. Yeah. Is that so where they've abandoned? the growth North areas of the church are in conservative areas. And, and so it's, you know, even with your poll, Kwaku, if you were to poll everyone, in the in the in the world on in the church you're gonna you're gonna skew a lot more conservative all the growth areas are in the philippines and right. in africa and in latin america well but, is that uh, why they've abandoned north america anti-woke areas they got basically. shiny new toys in africa and the philippines is that what you're saying bro 
The church office building is like, ah, whatever. We're, we're, ah, we're, you know. I feel like they're just trying to throw a bone to the angry, woke people in the church to keep them from leaving. But the problem is, is that they're going to end up hurting people by doing that. I don't and, know. And Greg, you're right. I, where the church is growing, it's even the concept of woke, it's, it's not even on the table. They're just, mm-hmm. you know, a classically, you know, Abrahamic conservative society. But where the decisions are being made and the decision makers are the ones, you know, in the area where this poll is relevant, and I just so, don't. You know. I just don't care about polls. I care about the truth. At the end of the day, like but you I, know, who uh, does care about polls? <laughs> you know who does? The I, church uh, office building. I and do, They send and, those and emails I, out and, to get this and, information. And, and, but here's the thing. And you and, may not have voted. Jacob There's, not voting on your polls and the emails is the reason why Aaron Sherinian has the position he has right now. You're right. I, I, no, and I, I do know the church cares what people think. I do think that counseling with others is wise. But at the end of the day, I don't ultimately care. Right. What matter? I it doesn't change what is true. It can change maybe our tactics around how we go about doing things. And just just I want to clarify this. This is important. And that is. In this, if I seem like I am attacking sort of certain people that are dealing with same gender attraction or that I hate that gay people get married or something like that, wrong. No, that is not my take. What I have an issue with here is there the church has particular ideas and doctrines. And if those are under assault from ideologues who seek to manipulate uh, members of the church and it, as Greg rightly and well put, put their hope instead of in Christ, instead to put it in change and to tell them you, these aren't sins, these aren't wrong, they are, they're just fine, totally contrary to the church's doctrine, these are lies. Okay, hold on. So are you saying that, are, are you prepared to say you think that A. A. Ron Sherinian is an ideologue? His Twitter certainly betrays that, doesn't it? Well, no, come on, dude. Don't don't skimpy out of the question. Are, yes. are, are, are you saying that he's an ideal? I don't I don't I don't know the guy, but from what I have seen of the things that he posts online, if this guy is a professional in the in the art of communication, well, what if we look at all of his posts, does this communicate about his beliefs about marriage? And about gender. Does he define marriage as only between a man and a woman? Has he communicated that truth? Okay. Or has he muddled it? Well, let me let me look at this. So now this really fast, we're just gonna take 30 seconds and do this. I looked up his uh here's his LinkedIn profile. Uh Greg Madsen said that he's uh took issue with the LinkedIn profile. I'm just gonna put it up on the screen right here. We can just react to it. He's got this cool thing that says global extrovert. It's A A Ron Sherinian, which by the way, I do believe that has to be uh not a Lebanese, the Lebanese and the Armenian Armenians. It's the Russian Armenians and the YANs. I believe it's the Lebanese and the Armenian Armenians that are IANs. So I, 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 would, assume, I would assume he's got uh, Armenian heritage, which is kind of mm-hmm. cool. It was the first Christian country, right? And um, he's got some announcements here, some posts uh, about him in a communications class. Earlier today, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints announced that I will serve as his new managing director of communications, senior vice president of global reach, vice president of global communications at Philip Morris, de- director of global commu- communications at the Aga Khan Development Network. Here he is. Notice the, United- the last word in that paragraph. Last word in that paragraph. Okay. In the Paris area of France. Ooh, he's been to Paris. Okay, it says Aaron Shrinian leads global communications for the Aga Khan Development Network, founded and guided by His Highness the Aga Khan. The Aga Khan Development Network brings together a number of development agencies. Wow, I'm going to skip all the way to the bottom. You said it says learning about how trends and uh, sorry, Aaron is passionate about the global. It was up above. It was the last one up above. It was faith, hope, and I think change is what his his what he was saying he was doing. Okay, uh, level of self self reliance. Um, uh, design strategies. It employs over 80,000 people in education, tourism, cultural preservation, economic empowerment, baking, and a host of areas. Learning What's about, next to his name? Uh, oh, gosh. At the very top? Global Communications and Public Relations, A. A. Ron Sherinian, he, him. Yes, so he he's definitely... He's definitely virtue signaling yeah. the the pronouns. But there well, was, there they was they automatically added okay. those for a lot of people, didn't they? 
Um, I do Brad, not know. Your, your, the levels you will go to try and make <laughs> sure that people are defended. Well, is we're, just, gi- we're, we're giving people. <laughs> like, you got to hey, give it to I, these. Like, <laughs> I think, I think that we are making a. Big old mountain out of molehill with a lot oh, of this. Oh, Brad, don't I do think... this. This is like this is the problem. People in the church who have who who are who don't get bugged by this. Who just are <laughs> yeah. like, oh, it's just another, you know, it's just another thing. Jacob, that's going what do you on. like at Thanksgiving? <laughs> like, you were literally the I real sat, life meme. <laughs> I literally sat next to my brother, the Latter Day Skeptic, my brother Forrest. We sat like next to each other at Thanksgiving. We actually had a great time. Did you tower over him at your whopping <laughs> five foot four? Yeah. So, Jacob, <laughs> I'm having a hard time just because there's like uh, 15 super chats we need to get to. Okay, so, know, so let's burn, burn through the super chats. Because oh, also, last thing I, I will you, show, last thing I will show oh. on the screen is I haven't seen anything modern that has has been um, wildly woke, which I think is interesting. I can see why a lot of these past posts gave people pause, but. Any of the the modern posts, like here's his Instagram profile. And look, you know, do you think the profession of communication, it really matters anymore? Question mark. Here he's got a thing of Cosmo the Cougar. He's got a thing of, I I think, a kid playing basketball. Here's a picture with his wife. If anything, his IG profile is very milquetoast. And he has a very odd choice in um, bathware. You know, like he's got a, 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 I don't know if that's a bathrobe or, or what's going on here, you know? And, and the next picture is, um, well, let me get to the next one. Okay. The next picture is a very festive set of, um, checkered Christmas pants, window pane Christmas <laughs> pants, you know? So like I, I'm seeing some odd fashion choices maybe. Okay. But I'm not seeing anything where I think like, oh, holy smoke. Well, maybe he'll come out tomorrow with a new post saying, hey, there's been a lot of controversy about my old post. Just so everyone knows, I fully agree that there are only two genders and only through the union of those two genders can exaltation be achieved. I support the brethren and the family proclamation. Thank you all. And then I will eat this hat. You will eat that hat. Okay, did you, did you hear that, A.A. Ron? Did can you say, hear that? Can I say something, He's going to eat his hat. All we'll you got to do. That. All we you will have to, stream it. You, okay. yeah. I got I to say one thing, though. You really got to give it um, to, to the left because this is where they succeed so well. When the right is sitting around talking and philosophizing about the morality of something, they're out there taking the positions. Like, like I mean, like, seriously. It's called praxis. Like, the left is really good at winning fights because they just go, who's the who's the guy in charge? I want that guy's job. And they're really good at doing that. So you got to give it to them. I, I, I personally think it's uh, not unlikely if we see some sort of recognition of, of, of gay marriages in the church that are not going to be temple ceilings. I think um, well, at that's some exactly, point we're, we're going to have to confront that. If we have enough people who are ma- in gay marriages, they come to church, and you say, okay, you can't pass the sacrament. But, uh, ah, crap. We don't but have that, that See, would be my making thing them second classes. By the way, we're not going like, to talk about the strategy of dealing with that hypothetical yet. What we're doing is we're talking about A. a. Ron Sherinian, and all I'm saying here— But he may be the writing on the wall for that. That's all I'm saying. I know. Yes, you, you said that hey, earlier hey, when we covered and that. that is the problem. Yeah. Hold on. Is it is we're making let, people think that, okay, like Kwaku? Yeah, we got it. We got to stay on track here. Brad, you got to be more forceful. No, no. no right. I have to be more forceful because it's my <laughs> podcast. So I'm being forceful right here, and I'm just bringing up one point so we can put this to bed. There's nothing, and I'm making sure that I steal man your positions as well as his. There is nothing that I saw in his current Instagram profile that is a wild virtue signal towards any disqualifying woke ideas. All of the posts that I took issue with and I thought were, oof, a little bit questionable and gave me pause, all seem to have come from 2016 and 2017, which makes me wonder... Has he developed maybe a more nuanced opinion? Is he approaching it a different way because he's had experience that has taught him something that's maybe more in line? Oh, dude. With By the way, Philip Morris is a tobacco brand that he was doing global communications for. Oh, I thought it was yeah. William Mor- Morris. Duh, I was thinking of the agency. Yeah. Or in maybe Hollywood. he was gunning for a higher job, so he's kind of kept it a little cooler lately so he could get the position. Okay, maybe, but he had to maybe. keep it real uh, cool. So, Brad, keep going. So Jacob Bowers pointed out, yeah, Philip Morris is a tobacco brand. Wonko six by nine. He also represented Philip Morris, really. And then a yak named Max 
It's amazing how many other faithful LGBT people I've seen on this live. It's good to see I'm not alone as alone as I thought. Oh, that's good to hear. What's that guy's name? Uh, da, da, da. A yak named Max. A yak named Max? That is a sick <laughs> username, bro. You are a stud, a yak named Max. Thank you for the super chat. Keep going, Brad. Alrighty. Uh, Chelsea, as a bi woman who believes wholeheartedly in the family proclamation, we have to stand for eternal truth. Marriage is between a man and a woman. Wow. That was a very powerful stance from an LGBTQIA member. That's awesome. What was her name again? That was Chelsea. Chelsea, you go, Chelsea. Keep going, Brad. And then Pale Horse Riding Boomer. Ooh. This hire <laughs> reminds me of an ambitious field grade military officer. Uh, majors and colonels that will do anything for their dream assignment. I do not trust this man. So kind of echoing a little bit what Jacob was just saying, that maybe he was keeping things quiet to be able to get a position, right? I don't know. This guy doesn't and look like he could survive boot camp. I'm sorry. Like, I just, I, I think that's a bad example. I think with those pants that he was wearing in his Instagram profile, you cannot tell me this guy who's holding a dog in skeleton pajamas, all right, is going to storm the beaches at Normandy. Probably a super nice guy. You know, but anyway, yes. I found so, this, is, this is, sorry, Brad, this, I feel like it's really relevant to the conversation. Uh, Aaron Trinian, August 23rd, 2023, um, posted this quote from Global Extrovert, New York Times. It says, it takes courage for public facing institutions to allow for a true diversity of ideas, especially when it comes to matters of faith and identity. And that's a quote from Tish Harrison Warren's. He put that quote on Instagram and said, I loved reading this New York Times opinion column by Tish and was grateful for all the inspirational insights it offered about faith and values in the media and the public square. Blech. So, um, I mean, that was the most recent thing I could find from something like this. But he is, this guy is engaged in society. Like, this guy is engaged, engaged. And um, I'd invite him to a party at my house with those pants on. So he's, he's, he I'm probably really not the smart. only one. He's, like he seems like he's extremely smart, but he is kind of mysterious because people are wondering: Are you still very much leftist, or is that something in the past? Uh, were you hired because you're a leftist? Were you hired in spite of it because you're just you're that good at your job? There's a lot of yeah. questions. We may not ever get the answers to them either. Okay, so Brad, <laughs> so. continue with the super chats. Keep going, my man. All righty, Christian Martinez. If he represents the church, he's loading. Sp uh, da, da. He's loading, spouting beliefs that go against the doctrine of Jesus Christ. If this is the only exposure someone has to the church, they're given misinformation. Yep. Um, okay. I have a feeling this person would hang out quite nicely with Jacob Hansen. Keep going, Brad. Go. <laughs> okay. Next up, we've got Rex Good. I'd like him to have to explain it to my children and grandchildren. Ooh, and, and Rex Good. And is... I think this is about referring to if things were to change. Yes, yes, exactly. Okay, keep going. Uh, be fit to be fit is reminding us that it's hedonism. Um, <laughs> be fit to be fit. Let me tell you, if you are pumping iron as hard as you are, just like making sure that you drive your point home, you're probably bench pressing triple your body weight, all right? We, we get it, dog. Brad, keep going. And then uh, technically Mexican. The celestial kingdom is not difficult to understand. Exaltation is simply parenthood in perpetuity, which can only be accomplished with temple marriage. Okay. All right. That was Alan Bentley. I, I, and I think that's a really good point to be bringing up because I, I think, I don't know, when, when we have this conversation come up and it has come up multiple times before, I, I just think, hey, what does our theology say? Eternal oh. marriage leads to eternal progression, and that's what it means to be like God. But we can just change is, that, right? We can just change the... You know, it's just we can just change it any time. I I don't think that's true. <laughs> okay, I'm but putting two more um, things from Aaron in the Discord that are relevant to the conversation of his opinions. Maybe right now. Okay, at the end of these super chats, I'll get to those. Put those in the Discord, and I'll pull them up while Brad's finishing the super chats. We also have ten minute warning here, guys. Ten minute warning. Um, actually. 12 minute and 13 second warning all right if you have any last burning questions any comments you want to make as long as we can appropriately euphemize them please make them appropriate for the algorithms on youtube we will try and read them and respond to them on air brad whitbeck go okay and next up we've got zach gorham the family proclamation is the hill i'm willing to die on the doctrine of the family cannot change without fundamentally changing the doctrine of christ all right and, yeah and i think Greg, that's you true. got a head I, nod from greg madsen true. You got a head nod from Greg Madsen, dude. That's like yeah, that's absolutely crack. true. The whole temple ceremony, everything that we do is going individually to go and line yourself up in covenant with Christ. Once you've done that as an individual, 
then you go to be crowned together as man and woman. It's the whole, it's part of the same thing. It's when Lehi goes to the tree of life, he goes by himself. It's an individual endeavor. Once he's there, it becomes a family endeavor. He turns and he looks for his family. It's, it's, it's it's the do, it's all the doctrine of Christ. You cannot separate those. We take the ad, what I always tell people and is we take the Adam support, and Eve archetype oh. very seriously. That's and to it. support the comments you guys just made, Angel Puff Starfish is saying with the recent changes to the endowment, I don't see a way that uh, SSM will be blessed and morally okay in our church. They made the language distinctive. Interesting. By the way, I feel like my username Cardin Ellis on YouTube is just like so lame now. We've got a puffer angelfish starfish. We got pokey flash. We got a yak named Max. Like, like I should have been like the Polish six foot five Polish hot dog or something You're like that. You're such a boomer. You know, Tom. I know I'm such a boomer. I just chose my name. Yeah, like what boomer, the heck? You Greg got a cooler Madsen. freaking hashtag than I do. You got a cooler user than I do. Uh, uh, Greg, you're like quick show, you know, and you got a guitar behind you that you can probably shred on because well, you're yoked and you play the guitar. You're everything my wife wished I was. Wished I were. That's past subjunctive and I did it correctly. Brad, keep going with these super <laughs> chats. Okay, so next up we have uh, Rex. Let's go with Rex's. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Jacob Mayberry's here. Okay. The church hires Aaron or Dan McClellan when the position requires a very specific set of expertise, i.e. where they'll have a harder time inserting their politics into their work. Not so for the Sunday school curriculum. Okay. Eh, I, I love you, Jacob, but here's the issue. Um, this is a position where you can very much be able to adjust how things are perceived. You can excommunicate a celebrity via tabloid now. That's a thing. Whether you like or hate Tim Ballard, we just accepted as a church that excommunication via newspaper or tabloid is a thing now. So this is the guy who literally has the power to ostensibly excommunicate anybody in the church via email to a tabloid. So yeah, it's a powerful position, man. Keep going, Brad. Alrighty. Now, back up to... Uh, trading with Steve, Isaiah 28, 14. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Read Isaiah 28. Tells you everything going on with the brethren right now. Ooh. Oh, okay. so an indictment careful, of the brethren careful, careful. from Isaiah there. Yeah, from this uh, brother here. Oh, it seems like Greg Madsen has already tread these waters before and knows the insinuation that's happening. Are these the Numo people that are like talking about how the church is in apostasy and we lost the priesthood back in the 1840s? Well, like some of the church might might go into apostasy. I just think we've got to be very careful about the sustaining portion of this. I mean, when you when you attack the brethren, you are you are cutting the head off of the body and the whole body falls. And you've got to, no matter what you agree with or don't agree with, if you love the church, if you love the Lord, you need to support and do the very best you can to hold things up. Okay, you know yep. what? You know Agreed. what I love? You know what I love? All right, I'll tell you absolutely what I love. I love these pants. I love the <laughs> pants that he is wearing, and I love these skeleton PJs that he is wearing. This is what I love, Greg Madsen. Nothing is cuter than a dog in skeleton PJs. So, um, Brad, keep going, my man. Keep going. All righty. So, next up, we've got Kevin Porter. Is that him and his wife? I guess she doesn't wear garments. That's referring to a much earlier picture. Um, I, I didn't see that, but I was also reading the And those chat. comments are always weird when anti-Mormons oh make gosh. it. So, it's just yeah, like, I'm not even going to feel dude. that one. Yeah, keep going. Yeah. You're a loser. Uh, uh, JP Botero, uh, what do you think about the gathering of Israel in the last days and how it's related to all the migration that's happening? Um, a little I know bit of a different. Well, Quaku's a big Zionist. Question. I'm sure that he would really appreciate the chance <laughs> to talk about how the uh, the massive migration to Israel is scripturally founded. That the Church yeah. of Jesus Christ, as it emerged <laughs> from the beautiful Constitution in America, as the righteous arm of God in the last days, by the most perfect men that founded our country practically profits themselves i'm seeing how far i can go before your head explodes oh yeah and <laughs> you know? I, I sustain elder uh, elder rothschild and elder schwab 
as uh, oh my the God. presidency <laughs> of the Quorum of America. Hey, they're heading that direction, though, right? With this guy as the new comms director. He's hey, a big look, globalist look, You'd guy, go to right? Davos in a private jet. If the private jet had enough swagger, you'd By go swagger, to Davos. By do you mean, like, kids? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, Guys, I swag. I... Keep going, Brad. Okay, cool. Next up, we've got uh, Glenn Hickman. I'm Oh, what's up, Glenn? I'm wondering what he means with this one. Kwaku, you're wrong. Blacks would not get the priesthood until Abel's seed had finished their mission on Earth, and their mission was finished in 1978 with the decision to no longer have a church patriarch. Wait, yeah, what? Yeah, he, he's, he's wrong. I'm, I've, I'm I've never heard that take before. the Brigham Young quote specifically, where it talks about the, the millennium must come mm-hmm. first. Oh, I, uh, I'm unaware of what... Well, the priesthood ban was a false doctrine from the start, so we're good. Okay, well, we got to burn through these super chats. Glenn yep. Hickman, you're a stud, by the way. He is a medical professional that oftentimes uh, sends us super chats while working hard, keeping a lot of people safe, secure, and uh, improving their health. So, Glenn Hickman, is thank he, you very I, much he, for your I service. I hope he's not performing surgeries while watching this show. I think it instills. Oh, no, he is actively <laughs> performing surgery scalpel, right now. And he's doing it with Siri. That's why some of the words don't make sense. He's like, hey, Siri, tell Quaku in a super chat that he's wrong. Ca- I need a 14 millimeter. He's wrong. Ca- oh. Suction! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what he's doing, man. That's what he's doing. All right, Brad, keep going. Okay, now we've got Brandy Harkins. God has, in the past, given the people what they continued to ask for, even if it was evil and they were warned by prophets not to. Maybe this will be the case here. Okay. Uh, that's an interesting... That that's, is an, that's kind of a... I haven't thought of that one. I've thought a lot of different angles on that. I haven't thought wait, of that re- one. Wait, repla- re- re- recite that one again, Brad. I just need to digest that one. I was trying to look at data on the live stream because uh, our bandwidth tanked for a second there. Re- recite that one, Brad. So we've got God has, in the past... Um, given the people what they continued to ask for, even if it was evil, and they were warned by the prophets not to. Maybe this will be the case here. Um, that That's true. Why do you think Israel stayed in the desert for 40 years when it was only a 10 days journey, right? Hmm? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that. I, I, I think that's true. So uh, at least scripturally, uh, there's a scripture. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With the wandering in Israel, the, in Israel, the loss yeah. of the 116 pages, there's lots of... of Perfect. Instances of that. That's an even better example. That's why we got you here, Brad. Keep going through these super chats. Let's catch up. Okay, Wonko six by nine. The church is far more likely to stop all civil marriages than they are to allow church blessings of SSM in any form. That's where I fit uh, in. I think that's way more likely as well. I think that's probably the direction that it goes. We you end lose up having that. Of the membership, if you did it, I'm just, just telling you, it's 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 if, suicide. If they were to, what, what do you mean, Greg? If the church were to lead, were, were to seal. Is that what you're saying? If the church were to seal man, you know, homosexual marriage in the temple, you would lose eighty percent of the no, church. No, no, we're saying we're, that we we're would saying... get we would get out of the business of marriages and offering marriage licenses. We would say oh. we no longer. We've already perform... done that in a lot of countries. In yeah. a lot of exactly. countries, yes. Yeah. Exactly. I, I think that's just going to be what happens here in America. I, I don't think that this hiring of this one guy means now we're looking at some big doctrinal change. I think we're headed that wouldn't, direction. Wouldn't, that we are. Oh, but there are other consequences. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, Greg, go ahead. You, I think you're exactly well, I was just going to say, I mean, there's two say. things real quick. I mean, one of the big, tr- biggest tragedy, the, the tragic thing about something like this, because I get the feedback on, from parents all the time, the, these parents in the church are battling constantly this ideology. Their kids have got phones. Maybe they shouldn't have them. They've got the media. They've got school. They've got teachers and administrators and counselors and messaging and friends constantly bombarding them with this ideology. And they're at home in their family home evening or at home saying, no, this is wrong. This is not what the Lord wants. This is not true. This is against the doctrine of the church. This is against Christ. Uh, uh, you know, the doctrine of Christ. And then they see this, right? Because it's not like we're making, the, putting this out there. This is all over social media. Yeah. And they say, and they come home and they say, look, mom, what are you talking about? The church approves of this. Here's someone they just hired as the comm director and he believes in same-sex marriage. And he believes in, in you know, X, Y, Z. You know, and that is the pr- the biggest tragedy here is the, as as Jacob said earlier, the confusion, the messaging of this, and 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 anyway, that that to me is that, is the biggest issue. The so, other thing is real quick. I've oh, got ahead, a Greg. someone in the know on this says the, the the you know even though those tweets were back in 2015, that's when gay marriage was passed, right? Yeah. Um, 
He says, knowing he was very in the thick of things in this uh, with the church, but it says uh, that he was publicly supporting same-sex marriage on the heels of the church filing an amicus brief right before that went through, right? An amicus brief legally to rule against legalization of same-sex marriage. So while the church is out trying to stop things and filing the amicus brief, this guy is out there publicly supporting same-sex marriage. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I was going to say on the, on, on the very real-world example, someone I'm very close to is considering if they want to have their youth attend the church. This person has a lot of friends who are evangelical Christians. And basically what this friend told me was that all of their evangelical Christian friends, this is a lady that I know, and all of her evangelical Christian friends are the ones who actually support Christ's doctrine of the family. And all of her Latter-day Saint friends are saying, well, you know, the trans thing, it's kind of complicated and maybe gay marriage will change. You know, they're kind of going on the Quaker route with this maybe happening. And then, (laughs) no, 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 I'm not saying, what I'm saying though is, no, Quaker, what I'm saying is is that you are- I like you, Quaker, I like you. I I love Quaker too. And I I don't think Quaker's, Quaker's on the same side with me, I think, in a lot of this stuff. What I'm saying is, is that, is that, but you see how that messaging, people like Quaker being, they think, oh, this is kind of the direction. It's going to change eventually anyway, right? And so what happens is, is that, um, this person that I know is afraid to have her kids attend church youth meetings because the idea is, well, why should I send my kid there to the church where they might get mixed messaging? Maybe I should send them to an evangelical Christian group that will, you know, be strong on these issues and teach them the values that I actually believe in. And Greg Madsen, you said earlier on a phone call today that now is the time for what? Now is the time to stand strong. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Finish the phraseology you stated earlier. Well, now is, the t- now is the time to stand strong, definitely. It, it's Look, again, this is not a vacuum. This is a massive movement. This is a change in our culture in the United States, especially a little more broadly in the West. But it, it, is, it is affecting the church, and, and it's, it's, it, it, it's happening in wards. It's happening in stakes. It's all over the place. Well, I and, want- to, and to put this out there publicly to someone who's, who espouses these things— Apparently, pretty likely, right? And and it's very confusing to everybody. We need to be. We said this before. We need to be the bright light, the the, the shining city on a hill. Mm-hmm. We need to be the alternative. I was going to say that. Um, let me just tell you a really brief story, very fast. Uh, in one of my wards that we were in, I've been in a lot of wards recently, so nobody's going to know exactly which one this was. But for lack of a better term, five out of five of the young women in a certain age group came out as LGBT, you know, uh, gay, bisexual, trans, w- whatever. And um, all of a sudden, you know, this happened almost nearly overnight. It's like, whoa, well, okay, first off, if it's five out of five, it's not a minority we're talking about here. It's not even a plurality. It's not even a majority. It's literally just a uniform, complete whole. So after sitting down with these uh, young women, we said, well, okay, well, what's going on here? Five out of five, uh, oh, holy smoke, like talk to me, like level with me here. And fortunately, because we had a good relationship with trust and they were able to level with uh, many of the leaders, um, it, it, it was revealed that basically they felt so much pressure at school that being called straight is almost now a pejorative. It's it's automatically associated with being like anti-gay or anti-LGBTQ. That if you say you're straight, that it's actually now kind of like a pejorative. That in order to kind of just like lift that burden off their shoulders or just not to have to deal with the stress or the noise, they just say, oh, well, I'm bi. Or, oh, well, I'm, you know, uh, asexual. Or, oh, I'm whatever. And, and, and that lifts that heavy burden, all right? And so I think, yes, the church, we're supposed to be a refuge from Babylon, okay? And, and it's okay to say, like, look, we love all of our brothers and sisters that have different orientations or have different points of view or things like that. However, you know, gender is eternal. And the reason why this is important is because we take the Adam and Eve archetype seriously. And we think that you will, there's no greater joy than joy in your posterity. And let me tell you about the plan of salvation. And let me tell about your unconditional worth. And let me tell you about Jesus Christ and so on and so forth. Like it's okay to do that. And I can see why, to a parent who already has trouble competing with social media every day, the friends at school, the fact that we are not doing a good job of saying, not only are we the alternative to Babylon, but let me explain to you why it's better. Let me explain to you why 
you know, finding joy in your posterity is the ultimate goal to aspire to towards. And even if you don't make it because you sin or else, you know, it, it, it's too hard and you decide not to for a while or, or just whatever reason, like you're still loved, you're still beautiful and we still want you in our community and you still have an inherent worth. That's all lost. And it's terrifying to see what happens to your children when that unconditional value and worth is lost. And that unconditional value is tied to Christ and the lessons in the New Testament and the Book of Mormon that you lose if you go the direction that most of these secular ideologies take you. So I can see why people would be concerned. Brad, keep going. Yeah, I, I actually think that I really appreciate the way that Greg put this earlier on his show when he was covering this, um, where he's reminding you, look, yeah, we have all of these things going on and we have these differing ideologies. We need to remember that we do love and care about other people, but that doesn't mean that we need to change what we believe in order to love those people. And I, I think that you walked the line really well in a way that I won't right now um, in, in your actual uh, episode. So if anyone is thinking about that, they should check it out. Okay, we're um, already in five minutes of overtime. Burn through these last Super Chats, and we got to let Greg go. He's got a big meeting with Barack Obama, who's coming into town to film his next <laughs> Netflix special. And he needs a lookalike for um, Jean-Claude Van Damme in his 50s. So they're going to cast him. Because he's the yoke Jean-Claude Van Damme. It's like this action movie where like they slam each other with their guitars. It's crazy. So keep going, Brad. All righty. Next up, we've got uh, doo -doo -doo. Sean Kruger. I find that interpreting doctrine and philosophy in terms of what leads to more life or what leads to a dead end for life justifies why marriage between a man and a woman is required. Okay. Life cult. It's kind of the cult. by their fruits you shall know them argument. Yeah, there's a video we did with Jacob Hansen in, yes, Life Cult versus Death Cult. We recommend you check it out and you subscribe to our channel. If you haven't liked this live stream yet, please like this live stream. Brad, go. Okay, Ryan Hansen and Christian Martinez, thank you. We got super chats from you. I did not see any words associated with them, um, but thank you. Next nonetheless. one. Same with Glenn Webster. Okay. Next up, Rex Good. Now for something on a lighter note, why do Mormons lock their cars when they go to church? I don't know the same so reason we come. lock our clothes in the 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 lockers in the temples because there's always that one. There's always that one, and he's usually a Democrat. So anyway, let's keep going. No, <laughs> his answer was <laughs> so they don't come out and find them full of zucchini. Ah, uh, I like it. That that's the, the Democrats would they'd steal that zucchini and the vegans <laughs> slice it up in little pieces, put it in their water with those steel little water bottles, shake them up before they go to the gym. You know, keep going. Okay, Glenn Hickman says, fun debate and all, but it's comforting to know that the church will never change on marriage. Thanks, Nelson and Oaks, for reiterating the truth from the pulpit, acting in your prophetic calling. I know your words are true. All right. Agreed. And I do think there's something to be said for that. I think there's a little bit of this, there's an aspect of being blown about by every wind of doctrine, by getting too up in arms about some of these things, because we know that it's not changing. Okay, how many um, Super Chats we got left? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve. Wow. Oh, so geez. I'm gonna keep on. Okay, just burn through. through them. Twelve, and then we'll let Greg go. I know. You know Any <laughs> updates on the Pirate Book of Mormon from uh, Chase Johnson? No updates on the Pirate Book of Mormon. We're gonna make some uh, content with the Pirate Bible, and also, if you want fifteen percent off the Pirate Bible, we have gotten a discount code that's Ward Radio fifteen for you to get fifteen percent off the Pirate Bible. That hasn't been put in our description yet, but now it's been said on air. Next super chat, go. All right, Braden Weiss. The government has been a bully since polygamy was banned. Could the church leaders still be being bullied by government officials? Um, yes, but it seems like they're more in cahoots with Davos right now than out of it. So no, I'm just kidding. I don't know. That's just something I thought that Quaker would like. So uh, keep going. Um, Ravens of Brook Cherith. Abraham wouldn't take as much as a thread or shoe latch from Sodom. This guy was proud of working for a company that kills people. Can't do it. Ooh, Philip Morris is talking about the... Yeah, the talking about Philip Morris there. That's rough. That's like working a Bud Riser. I could see how you could be an accountant if you're a member of the church in Las Vegas that balances the books for a casino. That was a big moral question that a lot of members of the church had there. I can see why people said, I'm not doing it. I could see why people saying, look, somebody's got to do it. I might as well do it ethically. That's a, that's a moral question that I think has people that are uh, legitimate on both sides. Yeah. Very good people on hey, both if, sides. If he's got a problem with... Uh, <laughs> With the Philip Morris thing, wait till this guy learns about the military. 
<laughs> yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> oops. Like, we have bishops that are literally undercover agents in my stake. And it's like, y- you know, if the Secretary of State just puts a hit out on somebody extrajudicially and you work in the CIA, I mean, have you broken one of the commandments? Like, I mean, there's some deep moral questions there that we ask about some professions that are easy to tag that we don't ask about other, you know? So, yeah, let's keep going. Quick, he's got opinions. Next up, pale horse riding boomer. Questions for this new hire, or question for this new hire. Are we about people or depersoning pronouns oh, and yeah. having people refer to themselves in third person? Despots are good at that. Uh, you know what? That is a criticism I have often seen, especially in the early days of the whole pronouns thing, which seems to be, by the way, woke is gone in L.A. Woke is dead here. It's not cool. It's still strangely cool in Salt Lake. But, you know, weird things that were fashionable, like those pants. No, I'm totally just kidding. <laughs> Weird things that were fashionable here three years ago are still fashionable there. So I think within two or three years, Woke will be just as dead in Salt Lake City. Keep going, Brad. All righty. Um, next up, we got Ben Giles. Um, you don't see problematic posts within the past couple of years because he started working at, with uh, DMC, Deseret Media Corporation, in 2021. Before 2021, you start seeing the LGBTQ plus posts on X. He's a wolf in sheep's clothing. Or maybe he learned his lesson during COVID. We're trying to give both options here. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to give both You're options ignoring here. You're the third option, Gordon. What's the third option? The third option is the one I presented that everybody's uncomfortable with. Oh, that maybe, that maybe it's coming. Everybody's uncomfortable with it. Maybe it's coming. You go, you just... Don't. Brad was just saying, it's. we can be totally comfortable because it's not going to change. Okay, well, let's keep going. Brad, let's do this Next really up, fast. we've got Badger the Honey Badger. Um, my covenants are not with the church. They are with Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ. All right, Honey Badger, that's awesome. Hit it. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up, we got two more from B-Fit to B-Fit. Um, He's pumping that digital iron, man. Oh, just one more. I already read one of the others. Okay. Um, uh, Carden. <laughs> okay, skip it. If you have to skip okay. it, just skip it. Go to the next one. Well, maybe it would be fine. I'll, like He's I'll not look using it up. any of the I'll words. I'll look it up and read it. Okay. Go to the next one. <laughs> okay. I'm just deferring to you on this. Uh, Joseph Burnham, uh, he's quoting somebody in the chat who is posting this a bunch of times. Okay. Um, Portals, I'm exploring. uh, Portals says, I'm exploring. I really want to join the LDS church, but people telling me not to. Um, I don't know what to do anymore. Have any ideas what to do? Yeah, think for yourself, man. Greg Matson, what should he do, bro? (laughs) Come on, give him an answer. You should join. You should. He yeah. should. You should join the church because it's the greatest thing in the world. Everybody's got problems, but uh, it is the refuge and it is the truth. Yes, Amen. And, and I would say, my man, nobody does a better job of telling you and instilling in you the first and most important principle that you have unconditional worth as a son of deity, as a child of God. And, and there's no other codified religion out there that does a better job, I believe, of cultivating that immediate connection with God. As Don Bradley says, we got the Catholic rich, richness with the Protestant sensibility. And I love the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints because it literally is, like Nathan the Wise, a little bit of everything all mixed into one, which I believe is what God wants for his children. The best thing you'll ever do in your life is joining this church. You can take that to the bank, my man. By the way, reach out on Ward Radio. We'd love to hear what it's like for somebody from the outside looking in who's investigating. Go to wardradio.com. Please reach out in an email. I'd love to converse with you, maybe even get you on the show, find out what your opinions are, or just have a little talk, just man to man. You know what I'm saying? Keep going, Brad. Okay, next up, we've got uh, Ryan Hansen. I think referring back to the Isaiah 28 scripture, saying, so now we cancel prophets in our own scriptures who criticize our leadership? These scriptures need to be analyzed, not ignored. I agree they need to be analyzed and they should not be ignored. But placing okay. them, placing specific statements on specific individuals, I think you need to be careful about it. Okay. I agree. I, I think it can be all too easy to just take what we want to have the scriptures say and then throw them out there, right? Like we have to balance that with when the Lord says, whether by my own voice or by the voice of my servants, it is the same. Right. Okay. There, there's, well, there's a, a lot in Isaiah and we right. all need to study it. And we should be studying it 10 times, a hundred times more than we do. And 28 is a very important chapter. Absolutely but, agreed. But just be careful on your application. Okay. So I'm putting a cap of six minutes on this. If we can't get through the super chats, it's got to end in six minutes. So let's try and get through them before we go. Okay. 
Cool. Carolyn Wright Gaines Music, God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We just have to stop trying to fit in and be cool. It doesn't work. This oh. is the sifting of the wheat and tares. Oh, Carolyn Wright Gaines Music! I hate that was to play devil's one. advocate, but I'm pretty sure the Apostolic United Brethren said the same thing in 1978. That, uh, it's not the same thing. It's. Uh, I think there's recent, I know, I reasonable know. difference. <laughs> I know, but I'm saying they pro- I probably said the same thing. Yeah. Next but- up, Glenn Hickman. Great debate tonight. Thanks for all you guys do. Oh, crap. He's bleeding again. Nurse Clamp Stat. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Glenn the Hickman. Text. Great sense of humor, man. Great sense of humor. <laughs> uh, then we've got Kelsey's comments. Uh, thanks for having integrity, Jacob and Greg. Ah, oh, okay. Greg's you... got a lot more of that. Okay, so me. hold on. Uh, Where's the block function? Okay, Kelsey. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just totally kidding, dude. I'm totally kidding, dude. Thank you, Kelsey's comments, for dogging on me, but at least paying to dog on me. You can always pay to dog on me anytime, Kelsey. Keep going. And then uh, last is JP Botero. This is kind of back to what Quaker was saying a little bit earlier. Um, supposing the church accepted same sex marriage, what would you do? Who is that question to? I think it was just generally to everybody. Oh, what would you do? I'd leave. Really, I'd work from within. Yeah, I, actually, I might, I, I might work from within, but I'd have to for my own integrity. I would no longer sustain the the brethren. By the way, what's work from within mean? That sounds like some equation. It means like I wouldn't hippie, leave the church. It means I would work stuff. from within, knowing that things have gone astray, and do my best to keep it afloat. I mean, well, isn't that all that the Numo people are doing? Actually, no, they're not. They're advocating for people to get rebaptized, which is technically a different movement. You're right. So, okay, keep going. Awesome. Next super chat. Go. Um, next up uh, is waiting for you in the Discord, Carden, for you to decide if you want to read it or not. Oh, it's waiting <laughs> for me in the Discord to decide if I want to read it. Okay, yeah. go to the one after that. All right. And then uh, then we're finally finalizing with welcoming to the ward JStormy94 and Craig Newsom and Brittany McGuff. Oh, awesome. We have um, received the records of, say that again? Brittany McGuff, Jay Stormy 94 and Craig Newsom. Okay, awesome. Wow, hey, you got the balloons, too, and what everything. That? That, I don't know how you did that, but that was rad. Okay, we have received the records of these three new members. Everybody that wants to welcome them into the ward, Radio Wigwam, please put three W's in the chat. Do it right now before we go. Um, and then, yes, be fit to be fit. Uh, made a joke about uh, a sausage factory. So, um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> when you go to a party with too many dudes, they call it a sausage party. <laughs> there's a whole movie based off of that meme. Uh, I would refer you to that movie. Thank you, Be Fit, to Be Fit. Anyway, are we all caught up in Super Chats? Brad? Yeah, we have made okay. it through, finally. All right, so now we can go all right that was just totally awesome at the end of the day okay we hope everybody here was represented uh represented in as best a way as we could so their true thought their 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 true heart and mind was put on display as it really is and i think you guys bring up some good points where can people find you if they want to follow you we've made some recommendations that you follow these guys uh greg Matson has a super cool podcast so does jacob hansen and kwaku l has a very frustrating but entertaining and engaging <laughs> twitter profile that needs to get back up to 50k like it was before you know why don't you guys before we go uh, just 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 give a little outro say where people can find you so they can follow your stuff cuz i think you're some of the best awesome people on the internet right now greg mattson where can people find you go youtube at quick show and then the website at quickmedia.com at cwic media do they have to show proof that they voted republican before no definitely not i am not republican (laughs) by the way really no oh are you libertarian no are you constitutional he's independent he's independent do you walk around and say what's up my bigot are you- I, I, I haven't been involved with a, a political party for 30 years. Oh, really? oh like a boss. Like a That's boss. That's awesome. And be honest. I cannot handle the party structure. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I hate parties. It are, is really ridiculous. Are you in a band? <laughs> Not anymore. I used to be. The band that I was in, we called the Tenacious Monks. Really? Nice. <laughs> Last question, what genre? I, let's call it punk. 
Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Holy Greg smoke! Madsen, the tenacious the monk. Tenacious that is monk. his new. The, wow. That is the new thing. Greg he's our, Madsen, our freaking Gen Xer punk rock brother, who's talking <laughs> hyper conservative politics. I'll tell you the man. story someday of where that where that band name came from oh, dude, I, think, I think he is the tenacious monk dude that I, is that is Greg. I, i'm making a t-shirt that says a tenacious monk on it and it's gonna be <laughs> rad okay jacob where can people find you my man you can find me on youtube you can search for thoughtful faith or i'll actually direct you guys to my facebook forum if you want to actually chat with me and other people <laughs> jacob's more boomer than greg he's got a facebook forum <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> facebook group you can look for it's called uh thoughtful saints uh you can look us up up there and uh or you can check me out on youtube do you have like oval teen giveaways and like <laughs> de- oh, depends coupon codes on there <laughs> what you, uh, you guys can find me crowd. uh at quaku at human rights campaign.com or <laughs> my day job as the coordinator for the trevor project and um <laughs> I've, I've come into the church to infiltrate uh destroy everything you love dear <laughs> uh turn it into what i see fit and your tears will be my sacrament water, Jacob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Brad, Brad, you're the last one, my man. Brad, hit it, hit it. Oh, uh, you can find me on, I think, anything at Brad Arico. Um, and that is really it. We've got one final super chat with Kelsey's comments saying, LOL, I love you all. I didn't mean it as a dig. I just love Jacob's willingness to defend doctrine as a new member. Okay, you're officially unblocked. You're officially unblocked. No, I'm just kidding. Unshun. Kelsey's comments. She is a very uh, she she's a very uh, good fan, and um, she has integrity as well. And she expresses herself in very articulate fashion. And I appreciate her as a viewer of this show. So anyway, guys, it has been real, and it has been fun, and it has been real fun. This has been totally awesome. Thank you for hanging out with us. Subscribe to everybody here. We're gonna do the little outro. Uh, for a couple minutes just so that you guys can um, can chill in the chat for 10 seconds. The rest of you guys, stay put here on Zoom so when we're done, boom, we can talk. But other than that, it's been real and it's been fun and it's been real fun. This is Ward Radio. For this and more, please check us out on wardradio.com. Okay, yeah. Whoop.